Sachin Tendulkar. Um, how would you explain how much you idolized him growing up? Well, I used to, uh, it's funny, when I got to play with him, I, all these memories of me watching him play on TV just came to me like in a moment. Um, I remember growing up, he was, he was the one who revolutionized the sport in this country just purely because of the way he went on about things. You'll always have someone who will come and change the sport. Um, so if you talk about basketball, you talk about Jordan, the way he you know, just changed the whole outlook of the game and unlocked new abilities for people to believe in. Um, and that's exactly what he did. Before he came in, people didn't believe that these things could be done. But then he led the way and made people believe, no, these things can be done. And he made the sport more, more exciting. I remember I used and, to... And that's you now. So that's the funny thing. You realize that now that although in terms of skill, in terms of the innovation in sport, a lot of that is happening. But I think my opportunity I've been presented with is to motivate people in another manner, which is improving the culture of you know, cricket and, and um, the way cricketers should aspire to play for the country. You know, work hard on their fitness, be disciplined, take care of their diet, take it to the absolute peak of professionalism because um, in order to keep the standard of the, the sport going in the country and globally, everyone needs to take responsibility. So I think I'm contributing in that regard. But what he did from pure skill point of view, just the way he was able to bat was so much more different to anyone else. And that just fascinated me. I was like, man, this is so much more different. And it, it was so um, captivating. You just couldn't take your eyes off when he was batting. And I used to get, you know, I used to go to these shops and get my packet of chips and, and my nibbles and just sit in front of the TV to watch him bat. And it was just pure joy. How true is it that you told your teachers back then that you were going to be the next Sachin Tendulkar? <laughs> well, I, um, you know, a few people will always question you, you know, you're, you're practicing, you're playing, but what is actually your goal? So I used to tell them I want to be like Sachin. I, I, I'm going to one day play for my country and, you know, become this cricketer. And they all used to find it like all fun and nice back then. but. Even I didn't realize I was talking with absolute seriousness. But one thing I remember was when I used to watch everyone, like Indian team play. So there's, so in cricket, either you bat first or there's a score on the board and then you bat second and you try to achieve that. So it's the basic sort of nature of the sport. So whenever the Indian team was batting second and they had to score more than what the opposition had already scored. Which means they're chasing. Chasing, yes. Um, right, you know the terms. So, and when they faltered, I promise you, I used to go to sleep thinking, if I was in the Indian shirt, I used to dream of it. If I was wearing that shirt and I was in that situation, I could have done it. And it's happened so many times in my career till now that I've been involved in a chase and I've finished the game off. And I don't know whether it was that conviction that formed in my head when I was that young, that when I'm in that situation now, everything just takes over. So that's the power of mine. So the first time you see him in the dressing room, He's in the corner. You're sitting and staring at him for like 15 minutes. Uh, set the scene and what you remember. So we entered the change room uh, and everyone's busy organizing their stuff. And I, I am not bothered about my stuff. I just let my bags be the way they were and I was just looking at him. He's, he's in the corner and you know, I'm just observing whatever he's doing. I mean, think about it. He's, I've, I've looked up to this guy for my right. whole life and then right now he's in front of me in the Indian team change room and I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't sort of process that moment. And then I'm looking at him organizing his stuff. He's like proper, like precise about how his stuff is gonna be like, how his bags are placed, how his gloves, pads, bats, everything is placed and he's going on about his work. And then he looked up and you know, glanced at me and he gave me a smile because I just entered the team and he wanted to make me feel comfortable. And I felt so embarrassed that I'd been looking at him so I just looked away. And you know, that sort of, initial hesitation and but he was very welcoming and very warm and that's that's one thing that I really admire about him. What do you think you learned from him? I learned um, humility, I learned absolute commitment to the sport and just after playing for 25 years for your country still having the commitment to you know put the effort that he put when he was on the field is something which I think is a huge, huge learning for anyone, um, not just in sport, but I think across anything in life. 2013, uh, West Indies, Sachin's farewell test. Uh, take me through what you recall and why 
you felt like you wanted to give him your dad's thread? Well, <clears throat> it was obviously, I mean, we knew that this is his farewell series. But till the time we got to Mumbai, um, last test, last game of the series, last day of that game is the time that it hit everyone. Sachin Tendulkar is not going to play for India ever again. Imagine for 25 years, there's one name that's been constant in the Indian cricket team and now he's not going to be there. We felt like, you know, how, you, how a child feels like when they're scared or they're by themselves at night, you know, walking home and you feel that sort of that hollow and that, you know, emptiness around you. We f all of us felt like that because there was no one in the team that didn't look up to him. All those people in the team were all young people and we all have looked up to him. So that was a very emotional thing for us to process, but his emotion obviously uh, was of, of a different level at that stage in front of his people, um, you know, going out like that, the most, the most amazing farewell I've ever seen. Um, and then I remember um, in the change room, I just felt like, you know, just to pay respect, I mean, I thought there's nothing I could ever give him, but to make him understand what impact he's had on me, um, and how he's inspired me. The most special thing I have is a thread. Um, you know, we usually wear threads around our wrist. In India, a lot of people do. So my father gave one to me, uh, which he used to have. So uh, just to keep with me. So I used to keep that with me in my bag. And then I thought, this is the most valuable thing I have. So it's like my father gave this to me and I think I couldn't give you anything more valuable and I just want you to know how much you've inspired me and what you mean to all of us and this is my little gift to you. What sticks out to you from that moment, giving it to him and his reaction? His reaction was of, I think he understood what he's done for the young cricketers growing up in this country and I think it was a pure, like if you, if you told, if someone came up to me tomorrow and said that I've impacted their life in, in a certain manner, I would obviously get very emotional because I know where I come from. And obviously he knows his whole life story and his journey. You could never imagine as a child that one day someone's gonna come and tell you, you've impacted my life in such a massive way. And I don't think there's anything bigger than, than having a positive impact on another human being. Um, apart from all your achievement, apart from what you do in terms of numbers and all that stuff, when someone comes and says, you know, I, I really appreciate the effort you put in my life and you helped me at some stage and I'm really grateful for that. I've never felt gratitude more stronger than that.